The Baltic Sea has long served as a strategic chessboard where the boundaries of Western and Eastern military philosophies intersect, yet the geopolitical landscape of early 26 has fundamentally shifted the stakes. With Sweden's full integration into the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the once neutral waters have become the primary stage for a high-tech standoff between two of the most capable fourth-generation plus-plus fighters in existence, the Swedish Saab JS-39 Gripen E and the Russian Sukhoi Su-35S. To understand this rivalry, one must look beyond simple aerial maneuvers and delve into the deep-seated doctrines of electronic concealment versus kinetic dominance. In the narrow and congested corridors of the Baltic airspace, the physical disparity between these two aircraft is immediately apparent. The Su-35S is a heavyweight titan, a direct descendant of the flanker lineage designed for air superiority through raw power and extreme maneuverability. In contrast, the Gripen E is a compact, single-engine, smart fighter, built with the specific intent of neutralizing much larger adversaries through superior situational awareness and electronic warfare. This is not merely a competition of airframes. It is a clash between the Russian preference for mass and muscle and the Swedish mastery of agility and intelligence. For a Swedish audience, the Gripen represents the pinnacle of total defense logic, a platform that does not need to be the biggest if it is the most connected and the hardest to see. Recent intercepts over the Baltic in late 25 have highlighted the effectiveness of the Gripen's sensor fusion. While the Su-35S relies on its massive Urbis-E passive electronically scanned array radar, which emits a tremendous amount of energy to detect targets at long ranges, the Gripen E utilizes the Raven ES-05 active electronically scanned array radar. The Swedish philosophy emphasizes low probability of intercept technology. This allows the Gripen to scan the skies without screaming its own location to the enemy's digital ears. In a tactical environment like the Baltic, where the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad is bristling with S-400 surface-to-air missiles, the ability to remain electronically silent while maintaining a clear picture of the battlefield is more than an advantage, nearing a necessity for survival. The heart of the Swedish advantage lies within its electronic warfare suite, often cited by analysts as the most advanced in the world outside of fifth-generation stealth platforms. The Gripen E utilizes gallium nitride technology in its sensors, providing it with an electronic shield that can jam or deceive the sophisticated seekers of Russian missiles like the R-77-1. When Swedish pilots engage in simulated or real-world intercepts, they are not looking to enter a turning fight where the Su-35S's thrust vectoring engines might give the Russian jet an edge. Instead, the Swedish doctrine focuses on the first look, first kill principle. By the time a Su-35 pilot realizes a Gripen is in the vicinity, the Swedish jet has likely already shared the target data via a high-speed data link to other friendly assets, creating a web of sensors that the Russian heavy fighter cannot easily untangle. Lethality in this theater is defined by the MBDA Meteor missile, the primary long-range weapon of the Gripen E. Unlike the traditional solid-fuel rockets used by the Su-35S, the Meteor is powered by a throttleable ramjet. This allows the missile to maintain high speeds throughout its entire flight path, rather than burning out shortly after launch. 
For a Russian pilot over the Baltic, this creates what is known as a no-escape zone that is significantly larger than any other air-to-air -air missile currently in service. While Russia has deployed the R-37M, a missile with immense range and a high top speed, its ability to hit a small, maneuvering target like the Gripen at extreme distances remains a subject of intense debate among military experts. The Swedish approach is to provide the pilot with a weapon that eliminates the enemy's ability to kinematically outrun the threat, regardless of how much thrust their engines can produce. Beyond the cockpit, the strategic value of the Gripen E is found in its operational flexibility. The Swedish Air Force has perfected the concept of dispersed operations, a legacy of the Cold War, where aircraft must be able to operate from ordinary highways and rural roads if primary air bases are neutralized. A Gripen E can be refueled and rearmed by a handful of conscripts and a single technician in under 10 minutes on a strip of asphalt only 800 meters long. This is a stark contrast to the Su-35S, which requires extensive ground support infrastructure and long, pristine runways. In a high-intensity conflict scenario in early 26, the ability of Sweden to maintain a persistent air presence from mobile, hidden locations across the country provides a level of resilience that a centralized force cannot match. The cost of maintaining this capability is measured in billions of Swedish kronor, yet it remains far more economical than building and protecting massive airfields that would be targeted in the opening minutes of a war. The integration of the Saab Global Eye Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft further tilts the balance. The Global Eye acts as a force multiplier using its Eerie Eye Extended Range Radar to detect Su-35S flights the moment they take off from bases near St. Petersburg or Kaliningrad. By feeding this information directly into the Gripen's cockpit via the Link 16 or the Swedish specific data links, the pilots can approach their targets with their own radars turned off, effectively becoming silent killers. The Russian side, while having its own Beriev A-50U early warning aircraft, has struggled with maintenance and availability issues often leaving the Su-35S to rely on its own onboard sensors, which increases its visibility to NATO electronic intelligence assets. Economically and industrially, the Gripen E represents a remarkable feat for a nation of 10 million people. Each unit carries a flyaway cost of approximately 85 million U.S. dollars, but the true value is found in its life cycle costs, which are significantly lower than those of its Russian or American counterparts. For the Swedish taxpayer, the investment of hundreds of billions of Swedish kroner into the Gripen program is not just about defense, it is about maintaining national sovereignty and a world-class aerospace industry. This objective analysis shows that while the Su-35S is a formidable and terrifying adversary in a close-range dogfight, the Gripen E is designed for the modern reality of the Baltic a high-stakes game of electronic hide-and-seek where the one who controls the electromagnetic spectrum controls the sky. As we look toward the future of aerial warfare in Northern Europe, the conclusion remains clear. The Baltic Sea is no longer a permissive environment for traditional heavy fighters. The Gripen E, with its fusion of Swedish engineering, NATO connectivity, and silent lethality, stands as a testament to the power of specialized design over general-purpose mass.
While the Sukhoi Su-35S remains a symbol of Russian kinetic power, the Gripen E has transformed the Swedish Air Force into a precision instrument capable of deterring even the most aggressive of neighbors. In this silent duel over the cold waters of the north, the small fighter from Linköping has proven that in the age of digital warfare, intelligence is the ultimate weapon.